Our home price is finally dropping. Oh, I think I've been talking about this since last year, about end of October, beginning of November, that interest rates are starting to creep up. If you're a buyer in the market, you were hoping that's going to change and decrease the home prices and give you more options. But the real estate market isn't crashing. What's happening right now is what we anticipated a correction in the real estate marketplace is really where we are right now. How did we get here is a lot of demand that was created during the pandemic had and cheap money. Okay. Because mortgages were, they're cheap. People were getting, if you had a great credit score and excellent income and low debt, you could have gotten interest rates for a mortgage for like less than 3%. Okay. That's, crazy unheard of money was extremely cheap and because of that reason people were overbidding by even a hundred thousand in some places like in new jersey like people were overbidding 150,000 in Staten Island. We we seeing more like 50,000, maybe on occasion 75, but New Jersey was completely like nuts. Okay. So when money is cheap, people just spend it. Right. But what's happening now is money. It's still cheap, but it's not as cheap as it was back then, just a little while ago. And that created an affordability issue. So now it's important to understand that the supply and demand is still a big player in the market conditions. And I also want to go over why we're not going to have a bubble or a real estate crash. Some people keep talking about it all the time. I want to shoot myself when I hear that is what we had in 2008 is nothing alike, like what's happening right now. Back then what happened is a lot of people had arm mortgages who were too mature with between two and three years. And all of these mortgages were sold to them based on the interest only monthly payment. And then when those mortgages matured and now you had to be paying the principal in interest, many folks did not have the ability to sustain those kind of monthly payments. In addition with everything that happened, we had subprime mortgages. I mean, really if you had a pulse back then you would get a mortgage and that created a really terrible and unfortunate situation so we are nowhere where it is in order for anybody to get financing since then you really have to be qualified for a mortgage we're not in in that situation so what's happening now is during the pandemic, there was an enormous increase of demand for housing. More people stayed and worked from home. They needed more space. They wanted to get away from congestion. They wanted to get away into more rural areas where there's more space and separation between people. And that created a lot more demand that you would usually have when and we had low inventory we had low inventory since the 2008 real estate crash because a lot of the builders totally left the building industry they didn't want to get back to it anymore and catching up to building houses created shortage of inventory a really good example right here locally on Staten Island to give you an idea. So in a healthy market, we used to have between 3,500 to 4,000 homes for sale at any given time. Compared to what happened afterward, we started to decline. And at some point we came to under a thousand just not too long ago. So that gives you an idea of how much of inventory was shrunk just in a small place like locally here on Staten Island. But so we still have a shortage of inventory compared to the demand that we had. And even though there was a time that there was a lot of movement out of here and people were saying now prices are going to come down. Everybody's leaving New York. Everybody's leaving New York. And no, that didn't happen because whoever's left New York, at least as many, or if not more, actually more people wanted to keep buying. So it was a lot of like, chatter and a lot of blah, 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 and all oh, the sky's falling and all that stuff. But anyway, so it's important to understand 
why we're not going to have a real estate crash because supply and demand is still a big player in what is going on. So we have still a huge demand for housing and not enough inventory. Now there's another curveball that was just happened not too long ago. And that was now we have a supply chain situation. So we don't have supply to build as fast as we need to. We have workers shortage who can build houses. So there's a lot of those things that, that go in into the real estate equation as to determining where are we heading. What I do think that's going to happen is that sellers are no longer going to have 15 and 20 offers. Yes, if you're selling your house these days, you're not going to get 15, 20 offers like you, you just recently had before. The interest rate really made a huge change in what they are right now. But you're still going to have more than one offer, especially if you price your home correctly to where the market is, you will generate multiple offers. They may not be 20, but they might be a handful or half a handful, but you will get that. The additional difference that you will experience is buyers are not going to be willing to remove the inspection contingency or ask for repairs, and they won't be willing to remove the appraisal contingency. But hey, this was never around at least in my 20 plus years in being a realtor we've never done this removing inspections removing appraisal contingency are you out of your mind but again market conditions create new ways of buyers that are willing to do certain things just to get a house i believe that those things are going to be becoming more and more obsolete and in the past but at the same time i don't believe that we're going to have any price decreases really anytime soon. As long as the unemployment rates are low, as long as people are working and their salaries are increasing. And one more thing, the rents right now are sky high and many people will just evaluate and just say, well, I can pay this much money to pay somebody else's mortgage or I can pay this much money and maybe a little bit more and then pay my own mortgage and build equity and live in my own home. So with that being said, I, again, please, if you're thinking the sky is falling, it is not. If you're thinking that prices are going to start really coming down, they are not. But I do think that at some point we are going to start experiencing like a flat line. So a flat line of pricing, not too much increases, but regardless, home ownership is always, always the best way to build equity and in the same time have a roof over your head and have your own place to live. I still think that it's time to, to stop with the crazy, real estate market. I remember a long time ago when I just started in real estate, this is going 20 plus years ago, it used to take a long time to sell a house. It took about probably altogether somewhere between, I don't know, three to nine months sometimes to get to actual to close on a house. It took months to get a buyer, many times multiple price reductions, and it was a healthy market. It just back then was a different reason for it. There was no data available online. So it was more difficult to price the house in the correct numbers. But the other thing that was happening is there was one buyer at a time. And I remember negotiations, some negotiations that I've done for my sellers used to take three weeks. So it's, it was like, okay, the buyer gave us an offer. We reviewed the offer. We had time to think about it. Then three to four days later, we would go back to the buyer and say, counter this way. And then the buyer would take three to four days to, to come back. And then we would take another three to four days to come back. And before you knew it, it was like three weeks just to put a deal together. Those things haven't happened for the longest time, especially in the last several years. It's like crazy. Like, 
you don't even have time to blink because if you blink, somebody else is gonna snatch the house from you. So that's my news. And if you have another opinion, you're welcome to comment and let me know. If you have any other data that you think that is more indicating that the market's going somewhere else, please do let me know. And if you're interested in real estate, all about real estate and locally here on Staten Island, consider subscribing to my channel, like this video and comment, and I will see you on the next one.